Welcome to Coach's Corner with Coach Eric Struthers. I'm a second guess who you are. It's no time to get frustrated and want to sell down. It's no time to come out here and let challenges take you on the hey. Don't nobody know what we went through in preseason. Hey. Welcome to another edition of Coach's Corner with head coach Eric Struthers. I'm Katina Rankin. I'm Eric Struthers, and it's a pleasure to introduce the legendary Tamika Reed. <laughs> well, we're just so happy to have you on, Coach. Thank you. Thank you so much for you guys having me. Yeah. It's truly an honor to be with you. Yeah, well, Tamika or Coach Reed, <laughs> would you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I'm from Jackson, Mississippi. Um, a lot of people don't know that, but this is home for me. Um, I've been coaching basketball a little over 20 years. Um, I have a 10-year-old son, 11-year-old now, 11. He would go crazy if I call him 10. <laughs> and he's super grown, super protective. I call him my associate head coach. Um, and I love him dearly. And, you know, I've been all over coaching basketball. I've been, um, I started junior college level, um, went to Jackson State for three years, left Jackson State and went to um, UL Lafayette for a year and okay. left UL, went to New Orleans. From New Orleans to uh, Southern Miss in Hattiesburg, had a really good time in Hattiesburg, and um, left to be an associate head coach at Jacksonville University. Um, that was a very short stint, um, and I left there and went to Louisiana Tech to work with Teresa Weatherspoon, who's now the assistant coach for the New Orleans Pelicans. Wow. And um, after my time at um, Louisiana Tech, I went to uh, University of New Orleans. Okay. Um, and then God took me to be a head coach at Highs Community College and turned that program around. And then we came to Jackson State University. Um, Jackson State is a place I've always wanted to be. It's, it's my dream job. So I've um, been here, to just finished my fifth year, going into my sixth year. And so it's just been a really exciting time. Well, before we go on, I just want to talk about this because she is a Jackson native. But most people don't know that you were at Murrah. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Murrah High School, I tell you, that was my foundation. That was my grounding. Um, Anna Jackson was amazing. She instilled so much in us as young student athletes. Um, she taught us how to be a woman. You know, not just an athlete, but how to be a woman, you know, how to carry ourselves. We had to dress up for basketball games. We had to make sure our short strings were tucked in our shorts in practice. You know, um, when we would travel, we, we dressed up. We didn't wear the wingsuits. We had to wear nice shoes. Uh, we were top 100 in the country at Emerald High School. And so a lot of our players went on to play basketball, um, Division One, Division Two. Uh, we had some professional athletes who leave Murrah High School. Uh, just really good careers. And I just, you know, give that to Coach Jackson and what she did for us. Um, I won two championships with Coach Jackson. Mm -hmm. I know she's won several, but I was very fortunate to win two with her, um, playing alongside of some really, really good talent players. What, you know, what the audience don't know, when I was at Jackson State, you was assistant coach there, and when I was assistant coach there, and one thing that I do know about you, very competitive. I remember when we used to play, we used to play one-on-one, -on -one, two on two. Sometimes we used to play with the president mm -hmm. and you were very competitive. And what y'all don't know, she could shoot and she was really, really physical. Yeah. 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 And the other thing I want to talk, I'm just looking at all these rings and all this bling bling <laughs> that you got on. I'm just, I'm just so you wear, excited, wear. you know, about the things that you do, you did over the J State. Coach, I'm proud of you. Thank you. Oh man, I'm just telling you, I, I'm one of your biggest fans. I just Thank want you, you to know that what you've done, and how you done? You done it in the right way, and then some. Some people do it in the wrong. They do all this other stuff, but you have done a heck of a job, and you've done it in the right way. Thank you. That that means a lot. I remember those days when we were both assistant coaches, um, and our programs, the men and women's basketball, baseball, golf, mm -hmm. football. I right. mean, we we were winning. Right. You know, we won the Commissioner's Cup a lot, mm -hmm. and I knew then at, at some point in my career I wanted to come back and be the head coach at Jackson State. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was able to watch, watch you and your relationship with the players that you had. You were really close with your players. Um, they worked really hard for you guys. And, you know, um, just to come back and do great things, you know, it, it feels good. You know, and I, and I want to do it the right way. I want other people 
uh, high school students, middle school students, especially our black girls, mm -hmm. to know that they can do anything. Right. You don't have to leave and go across the country or in Houston or in LA. You can be great right here. Right. You know, we, we have to grow, continue to grow our economy, continue to grow our city. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm just really thankful that God has blessed us and blessed me with a great staff mm -hmm. um, and great teams, great players. You mm -hmm. know, we, we are we are as only as good as our players. <laughs> right, right. And so um, it's, it's been a heck of a run. I've right. thoroughly enjoyed it. So I want to get uh, a little personal with both of you all, if that's okay. Uh, here's what I know. I know that oftentimes when we're dedicated to our profession, there's this thing called loyalty. And women especially know about loyalty. And sometimes we choose loyalty over what's best for us. Mm -hmm. You spent what, 20, 25 years at Jackson State? I, I spent 20 years at Jackson State. So that was loyalty. Right. When you could have been somewhere else, but it was your alma mater, and it's where you gave back. Right. And you did the same. I want you all to both talk about talk to me as well as our viewers about what it's like to be so loyal to a career that may not be loyal to you. Hmm. Well, um, for me, you know, um, it can be really tough. It can be really tough. Um, to be doing so much and doing a lot of great things and not really feeling that support and that loyalty in return. You know, um, people look at football, then it's men's basketball, women's basketball, right. third. Yes. You know, yes. Um, and all too often we've walked in that shadow. Mm -hmm. You know, when we hired that a big profile coach, we were in that shadow. Mm -hmm. You know, and before that coach came, we had already won two championships, right. but nobody knew. We've done things that hasn't been done in the country, back to back to back to back, mm -hmm. but nobody really talks about it. Like back to back to back, swack women's head coach. Right, yeah. and we didn't talk about it today. Yeah, nobody, nobody talks about it. We're gonna talk about, about it today though. You know, and, and yeah. we, have, we have camps, we have things that we do. Nobody comes in and say, hey, what can we do to help you? Mm -hmm. Hey, what, how, what type of sponsorships do you need? It's tough, mm -hmm. you know? And what people don't understand is, after the LSU game, I was flown to Arizona State mm -hmm. to interview. Right. You know, I this was a, looking at you. yeah, uh -huh. it was a, it was crazy. I was super tired. Right. I was on one flight after the other, right. and it came down to a job offer that was paying me triple mm -hmm. what I was making at Jackson State. Mm -hmm. But I had brought in players that needed me. I had brought in players that was now on their third leg mm -hmm. in terms of transferring three times. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew certain coaches couldn't handle those players. I didn't want to leave them. And I felt like it was so much more to do at Jackson State. It wasn't about what was being done for me. It was about what I could do for Jackson State, what I could do for my team. There was more work to be done. And if anybody was going to be a voice for the HBCU community after our game against LSU, I felt like I had become that voice. I didn't want to run from it too soon. I chose to come back. And, um, you know, sometimes I, I think, should I have taken that job? You know, should I have thought about me and my family? Should I have thought about generational wealth? Mm -hmm. You know, um, but I put everybody else before me. Yeah. And I think because of Which that. Which women typically do. Yeah, it, we do. And because of that, I, I think, you know, God has been super good to me because I followed where he wanted me to be. Right. right. To make me I shout. Like I like that. Okay, what about you, Coach? Well, I'm, I'm just like Coach Reed. You know, God put you in the place that he wants you to be. I was there for 20 years. I worked 10 years under Andy Stodd. And of course, I played there for four years. So, but I worked 10 years for Andy Stodd, which taught me a lot of basketball. But the most thing, most important thing taught me about life. Mm. You know, he gave me a lot, a lot of life lessons there at Jackson State. Then I worked for a great coach, Tavester Anderson, for, for 10 years. And my Lord, it was to Jackson State, but my Lord, it was for those, to those guys because they was my mentors. They was like fathers to me. So I... Whatever I do, I go, I do a 100%. I get 100% of whatever I'm doing, I'm going to try to do 100%. Uh, so, you know, everything is based on loyalty. And I always say, hey, the harder you work, the better you put yourself in position to be where you're supposed to be. And God would put you in this right spot. So God has put me in the right spot. So I'm happy with all the hard work I've done. I'm happy with what spot God has put me in today. Well, here's what I both know about your work ethics, and it's tied biblically. 
because there's a verse in the Bible that says, work as if you're working unto God mm-hmm. yes. and not unto man. That's right. right. So I get it. Listen, Coach um, called me and he's like, hey, I, I want you to get to me on the show. Um, I really think that we need to spotlight her. And so I'm about to talk about women power. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Because queens recognize their kings. Oh, yeah. And we support them. Yeah. But that support is not always there for the queen mm-hmm. and not even from our own kings. Mm-hmm. And I know how difficult it is to be a first as an African-American woman. Let's talk about it. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's tough. You know, it's tough. And, and people don't understand it. Um, they see the rings. They see the championships. They see the, the celebratory part right. of it. But they don't understand what goes into it. Um, and, you know, when you are an empowered, successful black woman, um, you struggle in your personal relationships with people. Yes. And you struggle in business relationships yes. with people, especially when you started from nothing. You know, when you start from nothing, people want to keep you nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, and when you begin to grow, people don't want you to feel and see just how phenomenal you are. And so I have this thing where I always tell my staff, remove the lid. Mm, come on. Don't allow people to give you the bare minimum just to keep you average. Remove the lid. Right. I say, take the veil off. Take it off. Yeah. Don't let people blind you to just how phenomenal you truly are. Remove the lid. And let's talk about something else that women uh, are scrutinized for and men aren't. And most men don't even think about it. Um, Coach Struthers can show up. Struthers can show up every day, mm-hmm. right? In a pullover. Nobody's judging him for what he's wearing. Let us put on something that's a little tight, <laughs> or what they think is a little revealing. Yeah. And regardless of what we've accomplished, they're looking at our exterior mm-hmm. instead of our interior yeah. and what we've done. So there's a whole different level to what women have to go through than what men have to go through. And you touched on this as well, and I want you to go there. Women's basketball is overlooked. Mm -hmm. We support our men Mm -hmm. and men's basketball, but we don't support women. Why do you think that is? Um, You know, uh, financially, I get it from the business perspective. Um, women's basketball is not truly supported by the NCAA, the governing of the sports. Um, when you talk about going to the NCAA tournament, men's basketball gets, you know, money, two and three hundred thousand for just going to the tournament. Women's basketball, we don't get that. We don't get anything. So now you got a sport that's thriving, that's doing good, and then you have to find the finances, the financial support to carry these programs because the NCAA doesn't give enough. And so it's, it's, we want to push men's basketball because we need you to go make more money so you can help women's basketball to survive. We're going to push football because we need you to make more money so that we can help women's basketball survive. And so we're always the afterthought. And you know what? Here's what I find very interesting about that, right? Um, I played a little bit of chess and I wasn't good at it at all. But the one thing that I did learn is that a king cannot make a move without a queen. <laughs> and I'm not right wrong about it. You're right. <laughs> so it, it should be the exact opposite. Mm-hmm. And I think we have to train people to train their brains to think differently. Yeah. And, you know, it's incumbent upon our black men to lead the way and start. Because regardless, yeah. we're always going to have their back. Yeah. They need to start being the wind beneath our wings. Correct? And you're right. And I will say this. Ashley Robinson, yeah. our AD, he gets it. Mm-hmm. He gets the Does he really get it? I, I know think, you have to be politically correct, yeah, but does he really get it? He does. Because I will say this. We have the pieces. Yeah. Um, but he he's very understanding. He could say no to everything. Yeah. Before Ashley came, when I was first hired, they yeah. told me no to everything. Okay. And I said, how can we truly grow this program if y'all always say no? The experiences that I'm trying to give is not for my benefit. It's for my student athlete's right. benefit. How can you say no? So when Ashley came in, he was hired. Um, Ashley came in wanting to put the student athlete's concerns and business and quality See, experience. Like him. First, okay. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So Ashley, he truly gets it. He puts us in the place to be successful. He gives us what we need to be successful. He's great when it comes to women's basketball and help take us to another level. Um, but we need more. 
We need more. Exactly. What do you need? We we need we need people above Ashley to support us. Mm -hmm. You know, it has to come from the top over here. You know, we we have to get the alumni truly bought in. You know, season tickets are forty dollars. Wow. Coach I think. It takes about 8,000 people to fill the AAC. Right, right, right. If you can get 8,000 alum to pay $40, that right. can, I mean, yeah. that can carry us throughout the year right. financially. Yeah. You know, it's small things yeah. that we could do. Yeah. And so um, if we can get everybody to see it and get everybody to buy in and see the big picture as Ashley does, I think we'll, the, the university will continue to grow. Right. You and, do this, go ahead. No, I was just, you know, I call him A.B. Roberts. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, he's done a phenomenal job. You know, he changed the dynamics in the HBC yes. landscape. He has changed it. And, man, it's just, and, and a lot of people reaping the benefits from what he, he has done. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I know he's he's doing an outstanding job over there. But then I'm going to change this. And I'm just going to go to women's basketball. This year, I think I watched more NC 2A women's basketball than I did men's basketball this year. Yeah. It was very exciting this year. You had some some great players on the women's side. And I really got into it. It was I I went to go watch that game. I wanted to watch I wanted to watch those players play. So yeah. I just want to get your take on that. Yeah, um, this year was very electrifying. Um, the transfer portal has opened up for all levels to be successful, and it has made the women's side more competitive and more interesting. Um, and so you know we had I, I went to the final four. We go to the Final Four for the convention part to right. learn and go to classes. But I tried to get a ticket to the game. Right. The ticket was $350. <laughs> They've never been that <laughs> one ticket. Right. You used to pay $350 for all four games. Right. So, and I was like, wow. Yeah. I've been, but only to cover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if we continue to do this. Right. And now we can start being paid to make it to the tournament that first round. Right. Now we can truly benefit. And now our sport can, can really begin to grow. Um, but we're not where we need to be, but we have made great strides. And I will agree with you, Coach. Um, it's grown tremendously and it's so much, much more exciting to watch and to be involved in. Um, and I, I'm just curious to see where we go from now, from here. They changed the rules of the game to make it more exciting. Um, and so it's, it's been great. Let's talk about changing the game and the rules of, because uh, you sent a player to the WNBA, oh, right? Yes. But then after you lost her and some other people, you had to change your game. Mm -hmm. Did you? Yeah. And you went offense from offense to defense? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it. You are good. <laughs> you are good. Man, you know, people don't understand that. Um, Amisha Williams was a big time player. You know, she fell in my lap from Mississippi State, mm -hmm. and she made our program run. And then we had Deja Rogan, who was the MVP in Serbia, Rookie of the Year in Serbia, Defensive Player of the wow. Year in Serbia, all in one year, averaging 20 and 30 points a game. You know, and so those two players led our program and won three championships for us. Mm -hmm. I knew when we lost them, we were losing a lot. Mm -hmm. Although we replaced them with a 6'6 from California, who was a McDonald All-American, okay. um, and a 6'5 from the University of Houston, who was top five in the country, a five-star athlete. Mm -hmm. um, we replaced them with great players, but we didn't have that chemistry. Right. So we had to refine all of that. And so we had all these big-time players with big-time roles from where they came, and we some of them had to dim their light a little bit to fit. Yeah. And they didn't want to dim their lights a little bit to fit. So that was a struggle. Yeah. You know, we struggled. But um, I knew we wouldn't win the championship. We weren't quite there yet. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, to win a regular season championship at 17 and 1, mm -hmm. you know, that was great. That was hard to do. But we did it. But I knew we wouldn't, we didn't have the stamina to win the tournament. We, and not the necessary chemistry to win the tournament. We started falling apart. But you had an interesting technique, which is also changing the game. You brought them together, but tell us how you brought them together. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Man. Okay. You know, we, we, we had to do a lot of work with those players, you know. Um, 
we had to bring in therapists. We had to bring in um, life coaches. We brought you in early to speak to the team. Um, it, we, it took a lot of work. It's not all about basketball, X and O's. It's not all about that. It's about the mental. People always think that we you can talk to, talk to a player and get them to change their attitude mm -hmm. and their behavior. No way. Those are the secondary problems. Right. The initial problem is your perspective, mm -hmm. your percept, how you see things. Mm -hmm. A book I'm reading on leadership, you stand wherever you sit. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you can get people to change the way they view things, now mm -hmm. you can get them to change their attitude, their behavior, the way they act and why they act those ways. So yeah. And, and that's important that. because T.D. Jakes said people's perception is their reality. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so how do you perceive it? In your mind, that's your reality. Yeah. Um, I, Coach, do you have another question? Because I could just jump right in. I'm going to let you Well, I just, I just, I just, um, you know, people look at us as coaches and they, they watch our teams play, but they don't understand. They've been like, why he ain't why he play that guy? Why she ain't put that? But it's all about chemistry. Mm -hmm. And see, you got to have the right chemistry mm -hmm. to get the right product. Mm -hmm. And see, that's what, that's what the fans don't know. And they don't know what we go through every day in practice trying to figure out what's the right chemistry. But I, I see you, you didn't figure it out, Coach. You didn't really figure it out. Here's something else that you brought up that I want both of you to talk about because I don't think people really understand it. You all as coaches really act as mental health therapists because the fans don't know what's going on. You have players who have lost family members. You have players who have lost best friends. You have players who have been adopted. And all of that affects how they work on the team, how they work with their teammates. Tell me how you all deal with mental health issues for your team. And then you have to take care of your own psyche, yeah. your own mental health. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Yeah. Well. Well, in my case, I have a great staff that, that helps me out. And, it, you know, I got 30 guys that I have to, you know, mentor every day. And I got staff, you know, you talk about Coach Billups, you know, he, he can get in a guy's head and get a second. And, you know, I got Coach Stevenson and Coach Neal. But it, it really takes the whole family to, to raise, the, everybody to raise one player uh, on my team. Because you, you, we've been interviewing my players and you see that they got some issues, and, you know. And we just have to work through those issues as best as possible. Because when they wake up in the morning, you don't never know what's on their mind. You don't know what they went through and they went to bed. So as coaches, we, we don't think about that. But now I think about the mental health of my players now. And here's what I know. 33 years of the business, you sit on television, you talk about murders, you talk about, you know, people being killed, you talk about accidents, you talk about people losing their houses. And we do it with a straight face. But what you all don't see is when the camera goes off, and we go home, it goes home with us. Right. So I know the same thing happens with you all. It goes home with you. So how do you prepare mentally? How do you keep your sanity with keeping everybody together? Yeah, um, I want to piggyback off, you know, Coach. Um, uh, also, people don't know at our level, we have to take chances on players that nobody in the country wants to take a chance on, right. right. you know? Players who've been put off this team and put off that team, we have to give them a chance because they have great athletes can help us do great things within our program, but they may just be a little rough around the edges and need a little smoothing. And so, you know, having those therapy sessions, bringing people in to talk to them is really important. But, you know, when we leave, we do take that home with mm -hmm. us. And for me, you know, I pray a lot mm -hmm. and I, you know, I know that we serve a good God, and I know he's not going to give us more than we can handle. Mm -hmm. um, and to be where we sit, Coach, it, it takes a special person. Mm -hmm. And we were built for this. Oh, wow. That's so a quote that he said. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. when I lay my head down mm -hmm. at night and I'm struggling with that thing, I, I have to tell myself, you were built for this. This is your calling. People are coaching, but this is your calling. Mm, this is our calling. Right. Yes. You know, and so when you're when yes. you're anointed and you're in your calling, Come on. you're gonna have the strength that you need to make it work, you yeah. know? Yes. Yes. And, and coach, I'm gonna pick it back just on another segment. I had a player in here that he got kicked off two teams. And they told me don't 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 fool with him. He ain't gonna be guess what? He was playing the year two years in a row for me. Wow. Now I ain't saying I solved all his problems. <laughs> <laughs> but I took a chance on it. Yeah. And like you say, you got to take chances. And people give people a chance. God give you a check, mm -hmm. check and the third chance. And right. Why can't we give people 
uh, your yeah. chance. So <laughs> I like I like that. So yeah. uh, I know what you go through, Coach, and uh, I. I admire you for, for what you've been doing. Well, I, I think I speak for you, and if it's okay, we're going to have to have you back on. Um, but we're running out of time, and so a couple of things that I want to get in. For advice for other women who want to follow in your footsteps, what do you tell them? You know, um, success is not a glory road to attain. Um, there are a lot of failures that come before successes. There are a lot of sacrifices that come before you meet success. Um, the journey to success is really, really hard. And I can't, I can I can I can't I don't have enough fingers to count how many times I wanted to quit along this journey. But you have to be diligent, you have to be resilient. Mm -hmm. And you have to be an overcomer. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to continue to work hard. When you fail, you have to get up and move two times further than where you had, felt, had fallen. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I just want to encourage anybody who um, who's on that road, who's on a journey, who has a vision, and it, it's not looking the way you want it to look, you know, keep going. Keep going and just trust the process. Yes, yes. And your crown sits beautifully on your head, Wayne. <laughs> Congratulations for all your success. Thank you so much. So we started this new thing on the show, and it's called Ask Coach Struthers. Okay. So you can ask him anything you've ever wanted to know about him, Okay. whether it's dealing with coaches' life or coaching or anything. You get to choose. So here's your chance. Ask Coach Struthers. <sighs> Coach Struthers. Oh, <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> When I see. <laughs> Don't get nervous. Don't get nervous. Kostra, how do you handle being in an HBCU environment for so many years, successful, handsome, and single? Ah. How do you handle that tension? <laughs> well, well, it's, it's it's tough, you know, being a, a now I was a young black man, now I'm an older <laughs> black guy. And you know, and you get you get you get a lot of people saying different things. He this, he that. But one thing that I do that that saved me, I get on my knees every night. Mm -hmm. That's and good. when I roll out the bed every morning, I get on my knees. Mm -hmm. And that, and God protects me from all of that mm -hmm. that that comes at me at, at that stage. When and you know, as assistant coach, you know, you go through those things. But when you become the head. Mm -hmm. Then a lot of things, then the devil come from a lot of different mm -hmm. places. Yes. And you just got to be, my, my father and mother taught me how to be humble mm -hmm. in my walk. Yeah. So if I'm humble in my walk, God will protect me from all the other things that's coming at me. So that's what I do. I just be humble in my walk. Now, before we go, this show is airing right before your birthday. So the staff here at Coach's Corner have actually gotten you a little birthday gift. Wow. So open it for us and show the people what the staff here at Coach's Corner got you. Wow. Wow. <laughs> it's wow. a tie with his logo on it. Wow. Oh, that's nice. That says that he's super strong. So happy birthday since we won't see you on your birthday. Thank you so much. I, I might wear this tie for every game next year. <laughs> you should. <laughs> yeah. okay. This is the winning tie right here. You awesome. made my day. Thank you. You're thank you, staff. All right. All right. And thank you, Tamika, for joining us. And thank you all for tuning in for another edition of Coach's Corner. I'm Eric Strellis. And I'm Katina Rankin. Ms. Vicky said something to me the other day. And it's just, it just wrong. It, stuck, it struck me and it stayed with me. She said, what you are developing now, you're going to need later. Yeah. What you're developing now, you're going to need later.